I would like to thank the French Institute, the French Embassy, for supporting this occasion and event in our school. We are also very thankful uh, to Metropolia University, who is streaming this event at the moment so that you can watch it later on and come back to the ideas that we had. I would like to ask the audience to be active, proactive, and participate in the discussion during the afternoon. I would like to introduce the ambassador of France, Mr. Mansoura. Uh, he will welcome us, and let's have an interesting afternoon. Thank you. It's a great pleasure for me to officially open this uh, Nuit des Idées, Night of Ideas. As you may see, it is still daytime. Uh, we bear in mind that Finland is a land of innovation. Sunset is 4.15, but it's already night and already time for discussion. We in France have a long-standing tradition of debating. That tradition goes back to the French Revolution when we had discussions in clubs. Uh, and those clubs used to, to, to take place in cafés. Uh, cafés are part and parcel of the French way of life. Those discussions were not only intellectual, they were political. Poli political in the true meaning. That is to say, discussing about the way, the best way to live together in the polis, in the city, in a broad meaning. This tradition is well alive. Maybe some of you tried to go to Paris last spring, where we had demonstrators by tens of thousands in Paris for that event that went by the name of Nuit Debout, literally up all night. And it was discussion, discussion about what to do and how to live together. We started La Nuit des Idées last year in Paris. The concept was to gather intellectuals, researchers, academics, and leaders to discuss about the world as it goes and to how to make things better. It was a huge success, so we decided to consolidate that event uh, this year and this year, in 2017, the Night of Ideas takes place in 40 capital cities uh, uh, around the, the world. And in Helsinki, we have uh, one of the most interesting programs with five, five events. Uh, the theme of this year is a word in common. We do live in a globalized world, and we are all aware of the so-called butterfly effect. A very small event somewhere can have major and unpredictable consequences. So more than ever in human history, we have to take account that effect and to get ready to be in a position to deal with that word we have in common. A major issue, and this is no hazard that we start with it, is education. Education is not only a transfer of knowledge, this is also how we teach our children how to live together, how to work together, how to succeed together. Those issues are no longer national issues. We have to teach our children to live abroad. We have to teach children of foreign nationals who decide to live in our countries. We have to make a special effort as the concept of foreign is no longer what it used to be. 
today, the foreign, so-called foreign cultures, are actually part and parcel of our national cultures. This is an exciting challenge. It is also a difficult challenge. We need to adjust. We need to adjust our children. It's difficult for us. Maybe it will be less difficult for them because we will make, starting today, that special effort. I want to thank the European School for lending us its premises for this uh, e event. And I wish you all a fruitful and interesting debate. And I now give the floor to the panelists who are specialists in education and who will tell you what we could do. Thanks a lot. Enjoy your discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind words. And I'm sure that uh, the people of future will have to adjust. And I think that is a skill that will be extremely important when building the future together. This afternoon, we will have the opportunity to listen to two very interesting uh, presentations. Uh, Hannele Niemi is a professor of education in, at the University of Helsinki since 1998. She has a long career in the field of education, different posts, different assignments and projects. We are extremely happy to have Hannele Niemi here this afternoon because she has been leading major projects in the Finnish national system that has been praised all over the world. Mrs. Niemi is going to present an educational ecosystem approach, how to get digital, how to provide the facilities for young people in the field of education. The other speaker is also extremely interesting person, Mr. Vesa Perala. He is one of the founders of Clanet. I'm sure that you have heard about the startup enterprise that has now contacted and wor is working together with several different big industries in the field of uh, digital learning. And he has an interesting uh, presentation on breaking boundaries in education. I would like to welcome Mrs. Hannele Niemi and uh, Mr. Vesa Perala on the stage. You're welcome. And we will give first the word to Mrs. Andrenier. Thank you so much for this very nice introduction. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for invitation. It's great pleasure to be here in, in your school and participate this very interesting evening, or it's daytime, but in somehow it's also evening. So this building is very familiar to me. I, I have been here, uh, head of department and dean when the Faculty of Education was located in this building. So I am sitting in, just in this place in doctoral dissertation. So, so very nice to be again here. So I have had opportunity to think education from several viewpoints in, in different countries. Being invited as expert, what is the miracle of education in Finland? Because that has been a very interesting theme in last recent years. Finland has been successful in many international achievement measurements. 
So, why I use the concept ecosystem? That is my theme in my presentation today. What is educational ecosystem? Usually we know this word, word in biology, natural environment. It's ecosystem and we know that ecosystems can be very vulnerable if something is not working well, pollution, there can be several dysfunctions. We know also that when the climate is well and, and there is everything is in good condition, there is then very flourishing ecosystem. The concept has been nowadays also in veterinary and health education, and usually it consists of idea that we have to see the wholeness. We have to see the wholeness and how different parts are working in this wholeness. And then, very important issue is that in biological ecosystem, there is always some engines, some actors that bring some information, what happens in other part of ecosystem. What is in educational ecosystem, what we really need is that different parts, different actors really know what they are doing and what they are doing together. So that people know, teachers know what other teachers do, ministers know what other ministers do, then also local authorities know what teachers know, know, uh, do and vice versa. Teachers know parents, parents know teachers. So the issue is very much cooperation, co-work and communication. And that is the question, how educational systems really can create that kind of cooperative culture. And how we can create cooperative culture where different partners are really along and they do together work with, which is for children. And youngers, youngsters, all different age levels, but anyway, so that they do those learning paths which gives opportunity for learners to go forward. In Finland, I think that we have quite a lot of cooperation. Still, we have also many areas where we, we would need more cooperation at school level, at local level, that means city level, and at national level, as well as international level. So, these are the main features in ecosystem. What are then the features in Finnish educational system which has been very important for our success so far? One taxi driver asked me two weeks ago when I went to airport, when he, he knew that I'm going to some conference, what you are trying to say about Finnish system? What are those features you would like to tell about? Then I had to say very, very fast, what are those features? And I, I say, yes, I, I could say that the most important thing is equity, which means equal opportunities, that every child has opportunity to learn and every child and every learner is supported in their learning. So that is in societal structure the most important that we really give opportunity to every child. Then I think that the second issue is that we have high quality teachers and committed teachers who really want to take their profession as a real work and they see 
how much they can impact in students' life. So commitment and committed and high quality teachers is second issue. Third is what is in important in Finnish national core curricula is that school provide lifelong learning skills. And that happens from the early childhood, not only in adult education. That means that we gradually, year by year, day by day, take seriously that these people, these kids, these teenagers, they have to continue their learning and we give those skills and, and capacities that they want to learn, they have skills to learn and then we are preparing for the, them for the next phase in their life. Then I also mention that in every system there are students who need special help. And that is also our very important mission that we can provide in time when that need is really needed because afterwards it's much more expensive and much it's not quality of life if you got get the help in time. So I think that these features have been very important Finnish educational system. Now we are in a new phase in a, that sense that we have new national core curricula for all levels in IO education, for pre-primary, for basic education, for high school, for adult education. We are reforming because we understand that we need those skills needed in 21st century time. We need a digitalization, we need more and more connection, formal and informal learning settings. So I think that we can succeed if we do that together. I can see a lot of advantage how digitalization technology can cross borders, can create opportunities to communicate, to work together. But then again, I, I want to say that without this communication, without cooperation, not even digitalization help us. It's very much our will to work together. So what I would like to say, come and be along, make world better through education, being to working together and, and in communication. Thank you. Thank you very much for the interesting approach. Uh, it was, you know, directed to the future. There were elements on on the secret behind the Finnish success, maybe. Uh, you were also focusing on educational technology in teaching and digital learning. But not only digital learning, but also working together as a team, benchmarking, trying good practices, sharing good practices, and uh, the mobility that people would know what the other people do. Ministers would know what the ministers do. Teachers know what the other teachers do. So in a way, it's mobility inside the organizations. Um, Mr. Perala will then continue the theme um, uh, on educational technology. And uh, as a founder of Cland, uh, one of the startup companies in uh, Finland cooperating with United Nations, with Microsoft and other interesting companies. He will continue. Thank you very much. Uh, it seems that we uh, don't have to use the Apple moment here, so everything seems to work uh, beautifully. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, global classrooms, breaking boundaries with, uh, with the means of digital education. 
Um, uh, I said Clannet is a um, startup. We've been um, operating about three and a half years, building uh, some deep technology which we think will uh, disrupt the digital education uh, globally. Uh, I've been showing this slide about uh, how the education is moving to digital already for, uh, I think, two and a half years. Um, uh, I think uh, when I started using it, it was very much a debate about uh, will, it, will it really happen. There's been the promise of digital education for ages pretty much already, but I mean, very little has happened. And by saying this, I'm uh, definitely not saying that uh, everything will be digital. It's just going to be enabling a lot of things which you can't do with conventional technologies. So there's going to be classrooms, teachers, blended learning, all different kind of things. But the disruptive elements, as I think, will happen uh, through the digitalization. And those are the same drivers which have already uh, transformed quite a lot of other industries. What we do at Clanet, it's, it's, it's a digital uh, learning environment, personal learning environment. Uh, we've been uh, collaborating a lot with the University of Helsinki, uh, with the researchers there, with all the excellent stuff uh, these folks have been doing over the last uh, five to ten years and longer. Uh, so what we basically do is that we are combining the best part of uh, Finnish pedagogical research, uh, especially on understanding those parameters that uh, impact the learning of different individuals. Uh, those parameters are so many, they're very dynamic, uh, they're very personal. So what we've been basically doing uh, to get them uh, into a form of an online service is to develop uh, machine reading algorithms, ma machine learning algorithms. So uh, what we have basically here is a system that uh, learns to understand automatically how different uh, individuals learn so that we can, we can start serving them better. And, and, and the reason why we're doing this is that uh, uh, a lot of education around the world is still applying this kind of one-size-fits-all approach. So it's the same course, it's the same material, same everything for all the different individuals, although we know that we have uh, different characteristics what comes to learning. So um, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes on uh, how we think the digital learning can help to build uh, a world in common. And uh, I'll start with the personal learning I mentioned already. Uh, personally, I think that those uh, elements that will disrupt the education globally uh, are based on uh, two things. Everything has to be very, very personal and especially personally relevant. Like everything, everything online, whether it's an advertisement or uh, something else. If it doesn't make you think at that point of time, you're going to dismiss it. And it's a very brutal world. I mean, if it doesn't give you that personal relevancy feeling right away, nothing's going to happen. The other thing that's uh, very, very important is, is mobile. And uh, so basically what I'm saying is that uh, a lot of education going forward will be in your smartphone and it's going to be highly personally relevant. And this is what we do. So we use this uh, combination of uh, pedagogy and uh, artificial intelligence uh, to make things more relevant for every one of you. Uh, other one is, uh, like Professor Niemi already mentioned, lifelong learning is something that should obviously be taking place. Uh, our take on this is that uh, we enable um, basically personalized uh, accounts, so you have a place actually where you can build your lifelong learning uh, portfolios. Uh, we, are, we are basically making sure that when you start in our environment, everything you do is, it, it's, it's uh, yours forever. So it's like a Facebook account, which can be actually used when you're a student here, uh, when you move on uh, to other organizations, uh, whether it's also educational institutions or employers, you always keep your Clannet account with you. So uh, such these kind of simple things that uh, the digital digitalization can uh, help you with. I mean, instead of carrying physical books to another in the institution, you keep everything in a digital format. Social learning is uh, really, really important. 
Cooperation was highlighted already in the previous presentation. Uh, we've been shamelessly copying those practices that work in social media, how people work together, how they get notifications, something happening in the system. So we're basically driving people back uh, into the system where we engage them. So you can uh, get engaged with, uh, with, with the learning material, with your study bodies, with, uh, with mentors, with, with different kind of communities. And, uh, so everything is made uh, socially interactive so that, um, and the reason is the social interaction triggers learning for by far the majority of people on this planet. So, uh, so we drive people to learn from each other, to discuss, debate, uh, uh, exchange notes, uh, highlights, whatever. Uh, asking questions, uh, getting notification that now, hey, there is uh, a question from Vesa which needs to be answered and uh, so forth. And, uh, and this is already, I mean, we have wonderful data about uh, how the social interaction is helping people to learn uh, more effectively and, and, and uh, uh, also, also in, in, in terms of uh, keeping up the motivation to learn things. And then maybe the kind of, um, from today's to topic's perspective, uh, um, the most important thing is uh, what we call the global classroom. And I know it's a kind of password but we've been uh, truly implementing it in, uh, in our system. And what it means is that um, uh, we are building communities for, for different kind of learners. So we're automatically tracking uh, how different people learn, and then we're basically making recommendations that, hey, maybe right now uh, it makes sense for me to connect with, with one of you guys, for example, to learn something in an optimal manner. And, uh, one can build different kind of communities here. What we have actually already done in practice is uh, uh, we are supplying this to um, uh, Catholic education in Western Australia. It's about 100,000 students and teachers. Now we're setting up collaboration with those Australian teachers and the city of Helsinki teachers. So say the uh, teachers of biology, for example, can be cooperating, uh, maybe even uh, creating materials, learning materials together. Uh, obviously, I mean, it's up to every individual to uh, choose to do so, but we, we offer those digital means for, for sharing and uh, collaboration. In a similar manner, we have a lot of um, private school customers in uh, India, for example, and, uh, and they have actually typically uh, operations in multiple countries. So now instead of uh, everybody being a kind of closed silo, they can actually cooperate, cooperate uh, on global level. So maybe my question actually doesn't get answered by my uh, local study bodies, my, my uh, study mates. Uh, it's answered by somebody in some, uh, some other country who just happens to learn that particular thing in a similar manner than I do. So uh, very much the same things that we see on Facebook, Twitter, Insta, whatever, uh, we've been applying these on, uh, from, from pedagogical perspective in a way that they make sense. And, and this is something, I mean, I get fascinated all the, all the time because we can, you can, you can truly break those internal or artificial boundaries for learning. Whether they are like organizational walls of boundaries or simply boundaries between countries or different kind of cultures. And I mean, these sort of things uh, truly impact the learning. And from my perspective, uh, they are the ones, those are the things uh, that uh, very steadily now uh, have started to disrupt the education on global level. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank you very much for the interesting presentation and the point of view. Once again, you focused on social learning, digital learning, learning together, and then also building up global communities and, and when teaching is enough, try learning in a way was your message. And also the mobile learning, which is something that will certainly be uh, our future. Um, you both touched um, social learning, learning together, cooperation in learning, lifelong learning, and uh, Mr. Perala brought up the individual 
learning process and possibilities to learn individually according to the needs of an individual. On the other hand, uh, Mrs. Niemi brought up the equal opportunities for, for all learners. So how would you describe the importance of social learning in digital future world? Oh, thank you. That's a very important question and, and issue. Social learning in the global world. So I think that technology help us to cross borders and make our educational institutions also boundless in, in such a way that we can have connection, I think, that across countries, across schools, and get people to know each other. We have had very nice uh, digital projects with schools where students have created using their mobiles or tablets, taking videos, then creating small stories, who they are, where they are, also some stories about their history or language or whatever the theme can be, and then they have shared that with other students in other country or school. This kind of projects we have had with Finnish students, California students, Greek, uh, Greek students, Singaporean students, Spanish students, and we have learned how much students can also give to each other, and then how much they can also learn through sharing their own experiences, knowledge, and, and hobbies, and what they are doing. And I think that that's some very important start, that students in, in their own classrooms, in their own homes, they can be connected to other students in other countries. So that's the first step. But certainly then, I think that when we are going to working life, Nowadays, almost everything happens in teams and international teams. Then we need also cultural understanding that we, we are also different. There are different cultures to communicate, to, to work, and that also is some future skills that we understand that when we are working with the different people, they are probably also different in many respects, but still it's very important and nice to work together and learn from them. So I think that it's all the time learning also, but we need social skills. And that is, I think, one very important task of school, that we, we learn those social skills, how to work in teams where are different peoples and, and different learners and different type of uh, students. Uh, well, <clears throat> I obviously do agree actually with everything uh, you said, and uh, maybe, maybe to add on it, uh, from my perspective, um, and uh, I hope I highlighted actually in my presentation as well, the technology is just an enabler. Uh, so you need to obviously learn these uh, social skills you need in everyday life. Uh, obviously, the digital world uh, sets uh, a bit different uh, requirements for those skills as well. Uh, the kids to communicate uh, over chat most likely even more than they do face to face these days. So, so the role of the technology in the, uh, in the social learning is to, to provide those tools. And, and in our case, we try to build them so that there is always a connection to a learning theory behind as well. And, um, and then uh, from that perspective, uh, drive up those different uh, engagement mechanisms that, uh, that, that help people uh, uh, to, to socially engage with each other. And uh, when that's done, I mean, we, we've seen and uh, we have wonderful data sets on, uh, on uh, how much you can drive up the different kind of uh, engagement of different individuals. And uh, I mean, Finland is probably a good laboratory for as well, because I mean, quite a lot of uh, sort of introverts uh, in this country who might not be like raising their hands uh, as the first people on the lecture. But I mean, when you give them a phone and, 
ask them to make a video, maybe together with a group, I mean, then, then a lot of, lot of interesting things start to happen. So I think the kind of social skills, maybe from a traditional perspective, the way I have learned them, they're not anymore exactly that way. I mean, you need much, much more. You need to know, I mean, how to operate in the online, in the digital environment as well. So it's a, it's a sort of sort of really multiple uh, phases of that social learning, actually, we have to have to embrace. Thank you very much. Um, this leads us to individual learning. Uh, every year there are millions of young people all over the world who are struggling uh, with their studies. Maybe they chose something that they don't really want to study, they are not motivated anymore and they drop out. So how could this individual learning concept in a suitable ecosystem um, help young people to find their future, find their profession and future studies. Yeah, okay, so may maybe I can start. So why is someone is dropping out? I think that that's the, the very important question when we are thinking how we can keep everybody to to be in learning path. I think that very often the question is that there is so low self-efficacy. That means that they very often those students have so weak confidence that they could learn. And then learning becomes very difficult, almost dangerous for their personality. And uh, I have thought in, in recent times when, meet, when I met those children who have learning difficulties, that how we can help by encouraging them, giving good and good and supporting experiences that you really can you can do that you can take small step don't need to take big steps but you can take small steps very often also digital games can give these kind of experiences yes i i was successful because the feeling the sense that i was successful is so important with you and I think that when we are trying to assess our students, giving some marks or giving some examination scores, it's very dangerous if some student internalized that I am a very weak learner, I can't learn anymore. And, and I think that how we can as a teachers, parents, peers, to help those who are in, in danger of dropping out, helping them to have the idea and, and understanding that yes, you can do, we can help you, and then give, or for example, that kind of learning material where they really can take those small positive steps. In that sense, I can see that personalized learning uh, opportunities, that there are certain level tasks and, and those assignments that give also encouragement and, uh, and positive feedback is, is very important. So by saying that, I don't want to say that everything should be very enjoyable and fun, but if learning is always very hard and unmotivated, then it's, it's very difficult to learn and have any new information to own own thoughts. So that's why I have more and more tried to in, encourage and emphasize that support, encouragement, 
helping, facilitating are the most important. Whatever tools, sometimes it's a human person who is giving that support. Sometimes it can be some nice game or some digital environment. But anyway, the important is that it's something which support. I think from uh, my perspective, uh, the personalized learning links very much to the motivation of the individual, which again can be then a uh, result of multiple different kind of things. It could be that uh, a, a child or adult uh, doesn't want to read, but I mean, would be learning from uh, video materials. So, uh, and, and then, then maybe another aspect here is that, I mean, the world is full of content. And, and I, I, even if I had the motivation to learn something, how do I find those pieces of materials which, which really uh, take me there as effectively as possible? And there, again, and I'm obviously preaching this technology thing here all the time, but there actually digital things can really help you because it's, uh, it's creating content, for example. I mean, maybe recommending uh, relevant videos to someone to make the learning personalized and uh, motivational as well. Uh, I think personalized learning is very much linked to the social learning again, uh, getting the uh, support uh, from the peers, building those communities, and uh, uh, maybe just getting a uh, simple question answered by a peer student teacher. And uh, then again, I mean, after these kind of social interactions, you carry on with your personalized learning. Uh, we did a pretty interesting um, uh, case study uh, last year. Uh, one dropout uh, from, from um, uh, one of the applied uh, universities of applied sciences here in the capital region. Uh, this person wanted to become a plumber and uh, just dropped out, lost the interest completely to study. And um, just by coincidence, uh, he started to work for one of my sales guys at his uh, construction site. So we got this guy actually back to, back to um, studies on Clanet. And uh, we started actually building a community of people actually who were learning something similar. Uh, he wasn't uh, very much into reading. Uh, so so uh, the system started actually finding him materials in uh, other content formats. And slowly he started to realize, first of all, that I mean, he has to take the ownership of his own learning. This guy was 19, so I mean, definitely, uh, well, time to, time to take the responsibility. And that was probably the kind of first thing actually that started triggering learning in, in, in much bigger scale. And then he understood that, okay, hey, uh, and that leads to actually back to what uh, Professor Niemi said here, that uh, this sort of self-esteem and understanding that, hey, I can, I can do these things. And maybe the personalization of the learning and the materials and the kind of uh, peer support type of things uh, helps to build the self-esteem. Self and then it started to really, really go well, actually. I mean, they started, I mean, he, he got linked with uh, four or five other guys uh, who were starting the same things in different locations. And they started, I mean, just sharing videos, okay, this is the way I install the toilet, or whatever. I mean, something really, really practical. And uh, so they, they started learning from each other. So the social learning, the personalized learning, again, hand in hand. And finally, I mean, this guy graduated in six months and uh, actually considered himself as a very, very good learner, actually, in the end. And that's a big change from being a dropout. And then actually I think the, the best thing of, of the story was that uh, he created that kind of uh, personal learning portfolio in digital format. I mean, those videos, those different kind of photos he took those ins of those installations he was doing. He shared that portfolio with a potential employer and the only question they had that was, have you done all these things yourself? And next Monday he started actually working for this company in Porvo. So it's, a, it's multiple things always, but uh, I think I really, really uh, feel strongly about the personal relevance in learning, which links to the motivation at any given point of time. Thank you. So you're talking about motivation and involvement, engagement, empowerment um, in the individual learning aspect. And the, you know that the fact of is that the effect of dropouts would be 1 million euros per a student with the cumulative uh, uh, consequences. So it's very expensive for the society if a young person doesn't find uh, 
his or her place in the society. Uh, I would like to ask you, um, according to the theme of this afternoon, innovation in education, uh, how to be digital and how to bring innovation in the digital future. Uh, well, maybe I'll start this time. Um, I mean, innovation can be obviously anywhere. I mean, uh, we try to do our share from the platform perspective uh, at the same time understanding and it's just a platform. I mean, you need to have the content, you need the real students, learners, teachers, uh, all of those different kind of things. And um, from that perspective, uh, the technology, the digital technology can be the enabler. Uh, maybe even automatically bringing up those sort of magical recommendations, uh, making individual students uh, getting this kind of wow elements, that, okay, uh, how did I get this particular thing? Uh, how did it know that this is exactly what I needed? But then obviously, I mean, those innovations can be happening on a very personal level, whether it's a student, teacher, principal, the entire school. So, uh, so it's very much about, uh, like you said already, empowering, enabling, understanding what sort of things can be done. And uh, I think actually the best innovations I've seen um, lately uh, are, are probably like results of different kind of teamwork. A bunch of individuals getting together, uh, formally, informally, whatever, uh, started to work with something. And this kind of teamwork uh, seems to bring up uh, all sort of different innovations. Uh, the innovation obviously needs uh, nurturing as well. And uh, I've been um, pretty loud lately uh, in different forums uh, about, for example, this uh, kind of culture for trying out new things here in Finland. And uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of sad as well that I mean, well, we are still a small company. Our biggest successes are uh, international, like all the way to Australia, India. And I mean, uh, I would always love to have actually those uh, uh, test drives here in the home home country, the kind of home of learning. And um, so we need actually this, uh, I mean, this society has to be supporting innovation as well, so that we get the freedom of trying out new things and failing as well on individual, school, uh, city, state, whatever level. And, uh, and that would be something actually uh, which I would like to see happening in, uh, in, in, uh, in Finland much more uh, than, than today. So, uh, thank you, very, very important points, and I agree very much with them. And I think that the term innovation certainly can be understood in different ways. At personal level, it, it really means that it's something which is new to me, I, I could create something. But then if thinking innovation in wider sense, I think it's very social concept. So I think that innovation is something we can create together. I think schools, teachers and students together, teachers in a group, but I think that innovation very often needs that people are bringing different perspectives and communication and then they create something together. And this is something then we can change their working habits or their earlier ways to do something. And, and that's why I very much would like to see in schools and, and among young people that they are taking new perspectives, creating something multidisciplinary, crossing boundaries, putting different arts together, making new products, creating something which is new to them. I think that it's something that needs that we take also some risks and we try to share and make something together. So it comes very much to this ecosystem thinking that people are working together and they are trying to solve also problems together. So if thinking this future perspective, I think that all we also we have a lot of issues we should solve together in, in smaller case, in our 
own environment and, and schools, regional areas, but then in, in finally at global world. And I think that that's something I could see that future generation should take this responsibility that they really want to share in innovative way their knowledge and, and also how they would like to solve and try to find solutions to very urgent problems in, in the global world. Thank you very much. So we heard that innovation needs teamwork. Innovation is something that lives in freedom. Uh, it also must be nurtured and the diversity is welcome as well. Uh, we're about to finish the panel this afternoon, but I would like to give the audience a possibility to, to post questions for the panelists. A couple of questions, if you have short questions, you're free to, to answer. I will first give word to Mr. Kivin and my colleague from the French Finnish School. Thank you for nice presentations. The title tonight or this evening or afternoon is Innovative Education. And I would like to come back what you said latest, that you feel that you are not a prophet in your own country, that your innovation is selling in India and Australia and everywhere else except in Finland. I have been 21 years out of Finland, and I have just came back uh, in October. I'm looking at the Finnish education field with uh, quite fresh eyes. And what I have found, I have found the most innovative educative system I've ever seen. And I've been working in, in cooperation with 28 uh, European uh, ministries of education for the last 20 years. Uh, why is that? We have a new uh, curriculum just launched. We have new concepts like phenomenal teaching. We have uh, new ideas on how to bring digital learning in the curriculum, into everyday life of the children. And actually, I'm pretty proud of Finland of being so much innovative in this field. My hobby in the years when I've been out um, from Finland, I've been looking at the statistics and the international comparisons. And Finland is only always in the top five countries if we are looking for innovation and, and creativity. And maybe if you are living here in this dark, cold uh, country, you don't see it. But if you are out and you are coming back, um, I just want to raise our self-efficacy and self-esteem. that We are doing pretty well. I think I have to comment on that one. I didn't say that we wouldn't be selling in Finland, so we, we, we've been doing pretty well here as well. I think actually, um, I could actually what I said, it's, it's always not bad. And I mean, uh, I wouldn't, uh, well, when I sell a uh, client abroad, I, I typically start with, okay, hi, it's Vesa from Finland. As you know, we have the best education system in the world. So that's, that's, uh, that's how I start. And that opens up me any door. And, uh, what I, um, what I would like to see here, it's, it's kind of this kind of lost opportunity cost. We could be doing so much better. We should be becoming the kind of global uh, uh, leader in digitalized education. And I mean, these kind of activities, I don't really see enough from uh, uh, any, any uh, sort of uh, organiza well, uh, public organization perspective. Individual organizations, students, teachers, I mean, that's, that's definitely fine. I have a contra argument. The Finland has taken the, the educative world has in Finland has taken the digital leap only last September. We are not yet number one in the world. We will come. I really hope so because I, I see other countries.